Right out of the gate in this writing section, we're going to need to use one of the most important strategies for the writing section, and that is to predict the question based on the answer choices. In other words, let's figure out what they're testing using just the answer choices. So before I even read the passage, I'm looking at this and I'm noticing that they're swapping commas and periods here. So obviously then, this question is about punctuation. But even more broadly than that, whenever we think about punctuation, we need to think about sentence structure. Meaning, where do sentences begin and end? What makes something a sentence? So when you go through a question like this, now we know we're dealing with a grammar question where there's a specific rule that we're probably going to need to follow. So just hearing the sentence in our head is not going to be sufficient to figure out what the right answer is. We need to maybe see what sounds best, but also make sure that the rules of grammar are applied correctly. So here's a perfect example. Let's read it as is with the no change option in place. In the winter of 1968, scientists David Schindler and Greg Brunskill poured nitrates and phosphates into Lake 227. This is one of the 58 freshwater bodies that composed Canada's remotely located experimental lakes area. Sounds fine. But if we say this, there's no problem. But when we write it, suddenly we need to think about punctuation. Because when we talk, we're not using punctuation. It's all just part of what we're saying. It's, there's pauses in certain places, but there's no punctuation. You don't say comma as you talk. But as soon as you put pen to paper and start writing, the punctuation rules really matter. And some, just because something sounds good doesn't mean it's following the rules of punctuation. This comma here is causing a big problem. This is a run-on sentence. The first piece is a sentence that could stand alone. Listen again. In the winter of 1968, scientists David Schindler and Greg Brunskill poured nitrates and phosphates into Lake 227. That's a thought. I could end it right there with a period. The next piece is also a complete thought. This is one of the 58 freshwater bodies that compose Canada's remotely located experimental lakes area. That's its own separate thought. It exists in its own ecosystem of grammar. It could, the, uh, the first sentence that comes before could not even exist and we'd be fine with the second sentence. That's not okay if we want to try to join these two ideas together with only a comma. We need something more than that. Now, the best fix would be to just replace that comma with a period. However, we don't have that option because the one that replaces it with a period, they change the wording as well. And so just because a period fixes a run-on does not mean that the options with periods fix the run-on. In fact, both B and C cause a new problem, which is that they involve, squeeze that in there, fragments. If we were to start the sentence off, let's just do choice C. Let's do that one, it's a little shorter. One of the 58 freshwater bodies that compose Canada's remotely located experimental lakes area. Notice how my voice like kept going up and up and up, expecting something to happen, and then it didn't. The sentence just ended. That's what a fragment sounds like when you read it. Your, your brain is good at expecting an action, which is a required part of a sentence. There's no action here. So you just kind of keep reading and reading, expecting something to happen, and then the sentence kind of unexpectedly ends. That's not good either. So what's going to happen is that choice D is correct because it fixes the run-on not by completely separating the two sentences, but by turning the second sentence into a fragment and then attaching that with a comma. So you can't use only a comma to join two complete sentences. But one of the most common fixes on the SAT is to turn one of the sentences into a fragment, in a dependent clause. It's, it's just like a hanger-on. And we can hang it on with just a comma. That is okay. This is a really tough question to start things off. Fragments and run-ons tend to be some of the hardest questions on the SAT writing section because you can't really rely on how a sentence sounds. I think that choices A and D both sound pretty good. But that's because when I'm reading, I'm not thinking about the punctuation. But as soon as I'm writing, punctuation matters and commas versus periods make a big difference on how we interpret what we're reading.